We are now in a world where television, television designing, television narrative, film narrative, uh, music has changed how audiences absorb stories in terms of color, in terms of speed, in terms of lighting, in terms of fantasy, in terms of all of it. How do we, how do you relate, how much do you take that into your work, how much do you ignore it, and how do we adapt or change with a time that's been driven by sort of the, the digital age at the moment? Okay. Small question, I'm yeah. sorry. I think I think there's a couple of things. I think that, that if one is a, a a sort of a an aware artist, in other words, if 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 you're actually living in your society as somebody who's aware of what's going on, I think you sort of by osmosis you pick up signals and you ad adapt or change perhaps in a subtle way the style in which you design. Um, I think that. In the, what would you call it? Sort of the the, the biggest picture, uh, you still have to maintain a balance between what, in effect, become, shall we say, uh, analyzed after the fact as fads. In other words, it's sort of the uh, the flavor of the month thing. And I mean, we go through flavors awfully quickly now, and I think that for that very reason, you you have to kind of find some kind of a centering line in what you do that doesn't mean you're kind of knee-jerk to whatever is apparently mm -hmm. the popular thing. Uh, I think it's that that instinct that says, okay, even though everybody is now saying we've got to use X in terms of whether it be colors, lights, uh, you know, uh, materials, whatever, uh, I think there's a point where you have to say, well, well, wait a minute, is this something that's just a sort of a flash in the pan? Or is it something that I should be getting into? But I think that whatever you do, you have to finally a, a address something on your own terms. It's not a words. I think it's what is it? Bill Hutt had an amazing thing about saying that you you don't assume a character. You you deal with the character in the way that you would in the situation. In other words, you, you, it's a compromise. You, you are you are putting yourself and your own experience into something to make something become. You know, real, uh, valid, exciting, etc. And I think that in, in my area, there's a terrible, terrible tendency to want to show off things like new equipment. And ultimately, I have to say again, it's the fact that the best lighting is the lighting that doesn't actually call attention to itself. Now, just as a matter of interest, I mean, in the period when I began work at the festival, a big Shakespeare for various reasons, had maybe 30 lighting cues. Now a big Shakespeare has 300 lighting cues. So in a, in, in a certain sense, I mean, we are continually moving with the times in the sense of adapting to what's available as resources and also to some extent uh, an audience, I mean, a, an attention span of an audience, I'm sure, is fractional compared to what it was 30, 30 odd years ago. And so in order to keep people interested, we may we may almost have to keep sort of animation. Now, ironically, that's also a good thing for most lighting because lighting is all about change. Mm -hmm. And the more that you can really move the story along with change, probably the more effective it is without necessarily calling attention to itself. I should but, go to Susan. Yeah. You can't be an interior decorator in the theater, which is sometimes a tendency people pick up on a style, a way. I think you have to be an individual. You are an artist. It's your interpretation of what's happening in society. And it is osmosis. Everything's around you. If you're looking at going to art exhibits, looking at art magazines, going to the theatre to see other people's work, you're going to pick up the, the, the new trends, the new ways of doing them. Do you and watch television? Yes. Does that affect you? No, because most of it is bloody awful. 